A welcome everyone to the Pure Partners uh, virtual Zoom call. Um, I thank God, my husband, we're elders, Maurice and Kim Johnson. If it's your first time on, we want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. The PURE stands for prayer, understanding, reinforcement, and encouragement. And that's what we come to do every Sunday evening, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we are so excited on today. God has allowed us to come back from a glorious time as we remembered uh, our father's passing, which was a year ago. It was a beautiful service and we just thank God for traveling mercies back, amen. So let's get to it. So today we are excited uh, to have this awesome woman of God back with us. Um, Pure Partners Ministry, we deal with every area of life, spirit, soul, body, social, financial. And that's the bonus that we get here is that we get subject matter experts in every area. And we are so humbled to have Dr. Vicki Nunnery back with us. She has been on board with us. She has been consistent to come every quarter and give us updates. She took us through the pandemic. She has given us updates and kept us current with what's going on. And so we're just so thankful that she would give up her time unto us. So for those of you that don't know her, I'm just gonna read a little bit of her bio. Amen. Dr. Vicki Nunnery has been a registered nurse since 2006, in which she graduated from St. Xavier University in Chicago, Illinois. She joined, she joined the United States Army in 2006, where she was initially stationed at Tripler Army Medical Center. She later began her critical care nursing career in the intensive care unit. She also has been stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina in the ICU and served as the company commander of HHD 28th Combat Support Hospital. Dr. Nunnery has deployed to Iraq in 2010 and Afghanistan in 2013. In 2017, she graduated from Uniform Services University of Health Sciences with her doctorate in nursing practice. She currently serves as a provider and commander of the Family Medicine Clinic at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. In her personal life, she is married and has a loving husband and a handsome baby boy. I present to some and introduce to others, Dr. Vicki Nunnery. Ma'am, are you ready? I'm ready. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you guys for having me once again. Um, as she said, I am Vicki Nunnery. Um, my voice is kind of rough. I did have surgery in my vocal cord. So if I go in and out, um, sorry, I will try to do a little bit better. And we can't uh, see so your picture. Him, huh? We can't see your picture. Oh, hold on, let me see. Uh -huh. Sorry to interrupt. That's OK. OK. Um, so Kim asked me to do um, another thing on COVID. So I'm going to kind of bring up uh, some COVID updates to kind of bring everything kind of full circle. I know we talked about COVID a whole year ago, and here we are again, still dealing with um, this pandemic. So first, I want to kind of talk about what they say is late sequelae. So we know, you know, several thousand, hundreds of people have COVID. Unfortunately, we have lost some family members, but those that had mild symptoms, we don't really think about those people. And so I kind of want to talk about that. We do have some continuing evolving knowledge about those who did suffer from COVID symptoms, but were very mild or moderate. And so we don't know exactly how this course of the virus is going to affect us long term. But we do know that there are people who have had persistent symptoms. They are posing new challenges, especially to healthcare providers. Uh, what's going on is they'll have symptoms, they'll be tested positive, and then they'll come back several weeks later or months later saying, I'm still having these symptoms. And so the most commonly one that they do come back and report are fatigue, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, um, coughing, body aches, and chest pain. Sometimes they also say depression or headaches or palpitations. And then of course there's more serious complications where you have heart inflammation, some pulmonary function abnormalities, 
may have acute kidney injury, rashes, hair loss, alopecia, or still have that loss of smell and taste. And this had been reported three to four, um, sometimes six months later. And so we don't have that much research on this population just yet, of course. And so we're still kind of developing guidelines. So even on CDC or different hospitals, they're kind of still putting together on how do we treat these people and what should we do and what should be our guidelines. And so I wanted to bring that up. So if you know someone or if you're suffering from that and not sure what to do, you should definitely go back and see your provider. Um, it may not be, okay, this is the right, the correct steps that we do because we're still learning, but you got to make those follow-ups. You have to say exactly what's going on because if you don't, we don't know exactly what to do, but we can try several different things, get you into the main things would be cardiology. So getting that Holton monitor, getting that EKG, getting that chest x-ray, getting that echocardiogram and getting to see you to see a cardiologist are going to be the main things if you're still having difficulties with shortness of breath and sometimes that cough or um, getting you into a pulmonology to do a pulmonary function test to see what damage is actually done to your lungs. And like I said before, most of the time these people are those that had mild symptoms. So you didn't have the hospitalization or you didn't get intubated, but you still had symptoms enough um, along with that positive test that you may still have ongoing symptoms. So it, it's very important that you continue to follow up with your provider. Um, the next part I'll go into is talking about the vaccines. I know many of us um, have heard, read, seen on the news and things about the vaccines, but I just wanted to kind of touch on a little bit about them individually and then also kind of discuss, okay, we got the vaccine, now what? Um, because everyone thinks, oh, I got the vaccine and I'm good. So I just wanted to highlight a little bit on that. So we think about the three vaccines. We have the Pfizer, the Moderna, and then the J&J. &J. So the Pfizer and Moderna, they're considered our mRNA vaccines. And what that actually means is they contain some material from the virus that causes COVID and they give it to our cells. And then our cells make these instructions on how to make a harmless protein. And then within our bodies, we have what's called T and B cell lymphocytes. And these are the ones that help us to fight our viruses. And they, what they do is they um, create more lymphocytes to build on how to fight the virus. So that if you never got the virus and the, the virus introduced to your body, your body already knows how to fight it. Or if you get the virus again, your body already has idea of how to fight it. And so that's how the mRNA vaccines work. And like I said, we have Pfizer and Moderna. Pfizer is 95% effective. This one is for 16 and over. And this one is a two-dose series that is separated by 21 days. And then the Moderna is considered 94% effective. And that one is for 18 and older. And that one is a two-dose series separated by 28 days. And then the last one we have is a J&J. &J. Um, the latest data I saw for this one was 66% effective. Um, so I'm not sure if that's changed recently, but that was the last thing that I saw. And that one is called a vector vaccine. And that one takes a modified version of our virus, of the COVID virus. They put it inside this shell. And then that material from that, uh, from that virus that causes COVID, the vector gets into our cells. And then the genetic material from the virus gives our cells instructions to make that same protein I mentioned before that's unique to the virus to build those same T and B lymphocytes so our body remembers how to fight the virus. This one is for 18 and older, and then it's only one dose for that one. So a lot of people tend to like that because it is one dose. And then the problem with the other ones is people have to remember to take that second dose. And so just like with any of our other vaccines that are two and three series, some people never come back for their second one. But it's important that you do get that second one because that's when you're considered fully vaccinated. So if you only get one, um, that's not considered fully vaccinated. That's according to the studies. It may change in the future, of course, as we get more data, uh, but that's the current guidance right now. Um, there's been plenty of questions about if I get Moderna first, can I get Pfizer second or vice versa? Right now, we don't have the data to know that. So the vaccines are not interchangeable. 
um, the safety and efficacy of the mixed product series has not been evaluated. So if you start out with one, make sure you continue with that second dose, um, unless it's the J&J, &J, of course. And then um, you'll wonder why it's only for 16 or 18 older, because a lot of studies really aren't done in that younger population. Now, I did see something on the news recently that they're starting to do um, our younger um, children, but uh, I'm not sure exactly which one that one was. But in the future, we will start giving it to our children. I just don't know which one and what the ages will be at that time. So that's more to come in the future. Also, I wanted to say that if you do have side effects, which a lot of people do have side effects from vaccines, we don't have that much information. All we have is from the initial studies. So make sure that when you, um, I know for Fort Campbell, I'm not sure everywhere, but they should give you a website to go to or an app to go to. And we want you to put in your side effects because we don't know what we don't know. So even if you think it's minor, it's still important that you put that on there because in going in the future, we have 98% of people get a rash or 50% get this. We need to know that information so we can put it in our vaccine paperwork. So if this does become an ongoing thing, we know the common things to look out for and to tell people when they're getting the vaccine. So make sure you are documenting that if you had a side effect. Um, for our other vaccines, so people are still getting flu, but if there's other vaccine that you're due for, make sure you wait a minimum of 14 days, either before or after administration, uh, because we don't know right now um, what can happen, what the side effects are with other vaccines. So a lot of times, especially with our pediatric vaccines, we give two and three um, together when it comes to their well child visits. For this vaccine, we don't know how those work yet together. So make sure you do 14 days um, and make sure you tell your provider, hey, they're recommending you get a certain vaccine at your visit. Let them know that, hey, I just had Moderna or Pfizer or J&J &J, and I have to wait. And they'll make appropriate um, follow-up instructions for you. Um, with that being said, we don't know if there's gonna be a booster like the flu vaccine every year. Um, they're still doing research to see. And so right now that timing has not been established. Um, and so that will come out um, in the future. So I'll be looking for that too, if that's gonna be necessary for um, our coming up fall season when we start to see flu come back up. Are we gonna need COVID again? We don't know right now. Um, and then if you um, have had positive testing for COVID and you've been clear as far as your recovery is completed, you're out of quarantine, out of isolation. Right now they're saying there's no recommended minimal interval between your infection and vaccination. So they want you to get it vaccinated as soon as possible once you've completed recovery and no longer symptomatic. That way, if you are introduced to it again, your body knows how to respond to it and it won't be as severe if it was severe this time. And I know that kind of sounds weird, like why would I get it if I just had it? but you don't know how your body's gonna to respond to it get it again. And we don't know the data on reinfection. And so it's important that you cover your body, protect yourself um, if you are to come in contact with it. The other thing is if you did receive the antibodies or plasma that you should defer your vaccination for at least 90 days. That antibodies and plasma does cover your body for infection as far as recovery if you tested positive but we're not sure as far as the data. So right now they're staying to wait 90 days after that. And then after vaccination. So um, our United States is going crazy because everybody's getting vaccinated and they think, okay, well, now it's time to go live our lives again. We need to slow down just a little bit. So we're still learning how the vaccine will affect the spread. And then we also have those variants. So we don't know what's gonna happen with the variants in the vaccine. So we still should take our precautions. We still should wear a mask. We still should remain six feet away from other people and we still should avoid large crowds. The other thing is if you did get both vaccines, you're not fully vaccinated to two weeks after that second dose. So don't think you get that second dose and then now I'm covered. Your body still has to go through that period of getting the inflammation and developing those antibodies. And that does take a little bit of time. So wait two weeks um, after that second dose 
to make sure that you are fully vaccinated. And then the CDC guidelines are saying that you can gather indoors once you're fully vaccinated without wearing a mask if you're around other vaccinated people. So if you're not sure though other people are vaccinated, I would still wear your mask to make sure you're protecting yourself. And then um, for those who um, are around someone that um, was tested positive or positive exposure, but you were fully vaccinated, they're saying that you don't need to quarantine or isolate like we thought before or be tested because you are fully vaccinated. However, you still need to watch for symptoms. And so it's something to be aware of. Um, I do wanna highlight um, a couple more things. So thinking about um, our preventative measures. Um, I read last week that 85% of females didn't go for their mammograms last year because of COVID. And then another 89% of um, adults didn't go for their colonoscopy because of mammograms. So I do want to put that little plug in that preventive medicine is still ongoing. Whether we have a pandemic or not, I still want you to go out there, get those mammogram screenings, get those colonoscopy screenings, um, go out there, get your lab done, make sure you're, you're still getting your wellness checks. Most clinics while still doing wellness checks, it may not be as soon as you're going to get in like we used to with our face-to-face -face visits, but there's still availability and we still need to take care of our public. Um, with that being said, that if you, um, for our females, particularly for annual mammograms, you want to wait four to six weeks after the vaccine before getting your mammogram. Because like I said before, your body's developing those antibodies, your immune system is working overload. And so we get those enlarged lymph nodes that could cause a false reading. So make sure you wait four to six weeks afterwards to get your mammogram um, if you've got that vaccine. And then the last part that I'll kind of touch on, um, kind of a twofold thing, is COVID and mental health. Um, like I said, a lot of people last year didn't really go for uh, follow-ups, checkups, preventive medicine. Another big thing we didn't go in for was our mental health. And a lot of people suffered in silence, unfortunately. Um, from August 2020 to February 2021, the percentage of adults with symptoms of anxiety and depression increased. And so the largest population was 18 to 29 years old. And that's related to the fear and grief that spread of disease. And then the increased death in our um, large outbreaks caused a lot of this fear. And so there are several measures in place that were initiated to address this increased need. And the biggest thing was the expanded use of telehealth. And so with that, people are able to get in sooner to talk to their providers and, and get therapy over the phone or through any of our video platforms to reach their providers quicker. That way that we can address any issue that they are having or new symptoms that they're developing. There's also a lot of new apps out there to help with coping strategies. And so I want you, if you are suffering or um, starting to have symptoms, I do encourage you to use one of those two things, either apps or telehealth, depending on your insurance and your clinic. Um, those resources are available and no one should be suffering, especially now. So I want to give a few tips to kind of um, help you guys out for anyone that's dealing with that. The biggest thing is one is to communicate. We have to use our support system, whether that's your family, friends, coworkers, um, neighborhood um, people that you talk to, use your community to be able to lift you up and get you back where you need to be. So openly discuss how this pandemic is affecting you because everything affects everyone in a different way. Identify those factors that are causing your stress and identify any solutions with that person to help you be able to overcome anxiety and depression. And then ask them about any resources available. There's tons of online resources, tons of apps, tons of people that you can get a hold of um, if you need someone at the drop of a dime. Also remind yourself that everyone is going through an unusual situation and it's not just you. And a lot of times we think about it's always us suffering. Um, everyone's going through some type of battle, whether it's a mental battle, it's a health battle, relationship battle. We all are going through something and don't think that you're the only one and everybody else around you is perfect, living this happy life because a lot of, a lot of us hold it on the inside and don't show it because we, um, we think that that's being strong. And a lot of times holding on the inside is not being strong. That can also be a sign of weakness. 
and we have to use those around us to get us through. Also knowing to accept those things that we can't change, we can't have control over. None of us has control over this pandemic and we shouldn't even try to. But what we can do is try to use the things that have changed because of the pandemic. And there's good things and bad things that have changed. And we have to use that and try to take control of what we can. So increasing your sense of control by keeping a consistent daily routine is probably the best thing possible that you can do. The best thing that I will say is try to get adequate sleep. People don't understand the importance of sleep and how much sleep can affect you mentally, physically, and emotionally. So trying to go to bed around the same time and get up around the same time, even on the weekends. I know it sounds crazy because you want to hang out, but if you stay consistent, that's the best thing to do. And then make sure you're getting adequate sleep. That's not having our telephones, that's not having our TVs, our iPads in the room. That's using some meditation, reading a book, some music, um, taking a bath, doing what you can to calm our minds down so we can get that good sleep. And then making time for healthy meals. Now, I know the pandemic was the best for a lot of us. A lot of us did gain some weight. Um, and we can't be hard on ourselves because it wasn't just you. The whole world gained weight last year. But we just got to do our best to get back on track. And so the best thing that I can say is you have to schedule your meals and we're going to schedule our exercise. So I sit down, I try to at least every Sunday and have a book and I write down when I'm going to eat Monday through Friday, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and our snacks. And then you write down your exercise because you're going to schedule that into your daily routine. And that's part of your work. So you schedule what you got to do for work. You're going to schedule your workouts and we're going to schedule our healthy meals and we're going to stay on top of that. Now, are we going to fall off throughout the year? Yes. And that's okay as well. Like I said, don't be hard on yourself. We just got to get our lives back on track. The other thing I said is engage in mindfulness techniques. That could be breathing exercises, that could be meditation, that could be yoga, things that you like to do. So don't do what everybody else do. Do what works for you, and, but use those techniques that's available. And there's also apps for that as well. So use those resources. A lot of us, a majority of us have smartphones that that's available to us at the drop of a dime. And then the last thing will be if you are being treated for mental health or were being treated for mental health issues, continue to do that. And if you have any new symptoms or new issues, make sure you're discussing that and not feeling like you're being a burden on someone because that's what that person is there for. That person is there to help you. Um, and then at the same time, if you and your therapist aren't working out, find another one. Don't just say, I'm giving up and I'm just gonna go quit and do it on my own. You need to find that person that works for you. Um, with that being said, I'm open for any questions. Amen. Well, we're going to open it up. I, I just first want to open up and say this. Um, we are so grateful that you would still come after having your vocal surgery. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, um, just this little bit of time that you provided so much information. I got to watch this over again. I'm trying to take notes. It's so good, but. Sorry, um, I'm going to talk fast too. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. I just want to start off and open it up to everyone and say, you know, this is the platform to get your questions answered. Um, I just thank you so much for everything that you have already covered because it was so many, so much of the questions that I have, you've already answered. Um, there was a question in the box and I'll go ahead and read his first. Uh, Bishop Whaley had put a question in the box and I'll read this out since he put it in first. And he said, someone said these vaccines are full of fetus parts, is this true? No, it's not. What they did was they went in and they took out um, parts of the virus itself and they use it. So it's not live, but it took out certain parts of the virus. So each thing has like DNA, RNA, and it took the RNA part out of it to create a modified virus so that our body can respond to it. Thank you, ma'am. All right. So I'm going to give some up. You, baby, you want to go next? Okay, go ahead. Oh, Dr. Murray, again, once we say uh, thank you very much for coming on, I'm talking about you gave some great information and I'm sitting here like wow and I like the first thing you said continue to follow with your provider because some people sometimes we feel like you know because we're in a pandemic I don't want to go see my doctor 
or nothing like that. And like you said, I know one for myself, sometimes I do still do see my provider through Zoom. Mm -hmm. you know, and then sometimes, like you said, for the labs and different things like that, I have to physically go in and do. So that was a great, but one thing, one thing that really amazed me about the, the three vaccine, the different types. And this is why it's so important to, to get educated because I know for me, and I was just being funny, I was like, well, I'm gonna go get the Johnson and Johnson because it's just one <laughs> shot. Say that. <laughs> it's one shot and then because, it's, name, because his last name is Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> That's my personal preference. That, that was just me. My last name is Johnson. I was gonna go get the Johnson and Johnson, but Jesus. you educated me. Amen. Like that's sixty six percent. I'm like, yeah. I'm not really feeling that now, mm. you know, because now I know. So it's very informative that you gave us the information. Now I know I just can't go get the Johnson and Johnson because his last name is Johnson. Yeah, so yeah. I, really do, I really do appreciate you <laughs> educating me on, on that as well. So thank you uh, for that. Uh, but we get ready to open it up. Uh, we have do have a question. Okay. Uh, just put in the chat. Uh, uh, AJ. I have had the virus and had and have had, have aches and pains in my left shoulder and arm. Should I avoid getting the vaccine in that arm? You don't really have to, but if you're concerned, I would just get it in the other arm. And then it depends on how long in between you've had the virus. Um, if you had it recently, if you've been uh, fully recovered, then you can go ahead and get it. But to be on the safe side, I would just get in the other arm. Okay. All right. If anybody have any questions or comment, you may take yourself off of mute. Mm -hmm. If you, yeah. or if you want to put it in chat, that's fine. But if you want to ask your question, go ahead and take yeah. yourself off of mute. Thank you. Major Nunnery. Yeah. Um, with the, they called me um, a while back, maybe like two months ago and uh, asked me if I was interested in the shot. But then I said, no, at that time, can I call back to the Army Hospital and reschedule to have it done? Are you on Fort Campbell? Yes, well, I'm, uh, I go on Fort Campbell, yes, ma'am. So there's a website that they just put out. Um, starting tomorrow, actually, it's open to everybody not just the original categories that we had. So okay. you can go back on there, um, probably if you have Facebook, um, go to the Bach website, go to the Bach Facebook site. And you can go ahead and sign up for actual time to get it scheduled for your vaccine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I got nervous on that right there. I'm glad you just missing that, Lolo. Just for my wife and I, because I'm a veteran, can we both go on Bach and uh, go get the vaccine? Right, because you're a beneficiary still, right? No, he's not. No, no, he's, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. I would go, you can still go in there and double check. Okay. okay. Hello, this is Bishop Curtis. How y'all doing? Uh, um, A lot of people are, are hesitant, like you said, that the Johnson & Johnson is 67 to 69%. Um effective but you know a lot of people are so hesitant about getting that um the Moderma and the, um the other one Pfizer I think it is mm -hmm. they, they they have to go back for the second shot and like you said a lot of people don't want to go back for that second they want to get that one hit wonder and so how much more effective or how much um more do you think it is effective to to get the ones that you have to go back the second time is it is, is it shown that the, um, your immune system is at a greater um, defense with the ones with the double dose or the uh, the Johnson and Johnson, even though it's sixty nine to sixty seven to sixty nine percent effective. According to the initial study, they're saying that Pfizer and Moderna are both ninety four to ninety five percent after the second one. I didn't see any data as far as after one dose because they're only recommending two, um, and that's what their study showed. So. I would go with the, the two shot one, honestly. I know it does suck to have to go back again, especially with work schedules, but um, I would rather be 94, 95% effective than a 60 to 70. Amen. 
I have another question. I know others may have one. But um, it was one lady that came on um, on the news and she said that um, she was having residual effects, like you said, some people do after having um, COVID. Mm -hmm. And she said that once she got her shot, she was able to taste again, whereas she couldn't taste after the COVID went away. And um, have you all seen that that was um, an ongoing thing where when people had got the um, vaccine that they were able to, um, you know, the things that, that they didn't have anymore um, um, when they got the um, COVID, that they recovered from it because of the vaccine? I have not. Yeah, I haven't seen that because of the vaccine, no. I'm sure it's happened, but I haven't. Anything else, Bishop? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I got a lot of questions, but it's all right. <laughs> no, go ahead. I mean, okay, you wanna, <laughs> want us to come back to you? Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. Okay, all right. Be... All, right. all right, anyone else? And I just wanted to speak to uh, about the fear um, about getting it because like for us we had a lot of family members pass away um on both sides of our family and um the whole when you were talking about the mental health part that's real like really real um the anxiety of just not wanting to be around anybody because you're just having so much fear like that spirit of fear come in um not wanting to be around people, you know, I mean, it, it's for, it's real, like the anxiety and um, almost to the point where now you're faced with this decision of get it or don't get it. And um, there was a comment that was made that I wanted to ask about. And um, someone said, well, if everybody's getting it and I don't get it, I'm good because, which we know, we don't know who got it and didn't. But just to throw that out there for the thought process of, well, if everybody's running to get it, then, then I'm less likely to get it because people are getting it. Can you just speak to that? Because, you know, I know some people are thinking that because I've heard that a couple of times, but mm -hmm. go ahead. So what, what they're talking about really is herd humanity, humanity. And so with that, if we have to say 75 to 80 percent of the population actually gets the vaccine it's supposedly supposed to cover the rest of us that don't get it and so with that being said she's kind of right in a sense but at the same time you still want to promote it the more that get it the better will be i actually saw um a u.s map when i was working on this for today and it showed there's only i want to say maybe 10 or 12 states that are greater than 90% vaccinated. There's a still great part of our country that's between, I wanna say 40 to 70% vaccinated. So even with that, there's no herd humanity. We have to get more people vaccinated before we can actually even say that. And I will speak to your anxiety portion, you know, even for me, like not, uh, it's a little under anxiety. I don't hardly go to stores. I mean, with technology, I don't have to. I grocery shop, I go clothes shopping, I got Amazon, you know, we got Uber Eats and DoorDash and Grubhub, you know, so I don't have to go anywhere anymore. So, um, but then when I do go somewhere, like we took my nephew out yesterday, it was a lot of people and people aren't wearing masks anymore. Mm -hmm. So it makes you feel weird. Like, am I the crazy one? And, you know, don't stand too close to me because I don't know what you have what you don't have so it, it is that fear and then back to um you mr johnson i still get patients that call and say oh i didn't know y'all were seeing people last year even though I, we worked the whole entire year face to face in the clinic mm -hmm. uh, and so people are still scared to come out if i say hey i want to check you know your a1c because we haven't checked it in over a year and they're like well i don't want to go to the lab so there's still that fear and anxiety in people that they don't want to come out the house. And because their jobs have allowed them to work from home. And we do have, like I said, the Amazon, the Instacart, things like that. 
you don't need to go anywhere but to put your trash out on the curb or go get some gas. And even then you still, you know, got to use hand sanitizer because we don't know who touched it before you. So it is this underlying fear, whether people recognize it or not, there's an underlying anxiety because our lives have changed dramatically. And I'll, you know, me and my husband were watching a movie or something, we were like, hmm, that was pre-COVID because we're not doing that now. We just don't do the same things anymore. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, there's a phone number that's coming. Is there someone else to have a comment? Yes, I have a comment. It's Bishop Curtis again. Yeah. Okay. I hear a lot of people say they um they they do the Uber Eats, but um how long does um germs or the virus, how long can it live on a package that's given to you um from someone that has COVID? Or can it can it be passed that way? Like if you're doing Uber Eats or um yeah. Not sure. I know in the beginning they mentioned like how long it lasted on certain surfaces, but then they kind of backed off on that. So I'm not sure what the current um, guidance is or information is on how long it lasts on packages and cups and things. But that's still, you're right, that's still a potential. But then it also, I guess, goes along with our fear and anxiety because. If you go into the grocery store, you know, who touched that thing before you picked it up and put it in your cart? So I guess we got to have some, I don't even know how to put it, some level of, you know, reasoning within ourselves that you can still clean everything, but you can't clean everything 100%. But you still got to be cautious. But at the same time, I always say this, everybody, you got to live with what the Bible says, you can't live in fear. You still got to live our lives to some type of degree. And I will say, I mean, you know, thank God I've been blessed, but we've been doing the Kroger thing for over a year and I haven't had any issues um, or come in contact with anyone or symptomatic from COVID. Um, so, but yeah, we still have to be cautious about everything. Yeah, that's good. Anyone else have a comment or a question? Okay, so let me just see. Okay, all right. Well, Dr. Nunnery, you had something there? Uh, the 313 number, if you have a question, you, you can at this time. Just take yourself off of mute. Uh, this is Anne. Okay, go ahead, okay. Hey, how are you? Uh, I was going to tell this, that, you know, what I couldn't do about everything because, you know, I was with everybody. I was just blessed to be one that, you know, didn't pass away. And right now, I'm just, I don't know what to think because I'm still going through things and this month is real rough for me. You know, because I was there when everybody else was going through it. But I'm hoping that, you know, I can get over this. But it caused me to have bad nerve problems and everything. So I'm just so happy to listen. You understand? Yeah. All right. Yes. I don't have no more statements. Thanks. Okay. Thank well, you, and, and And to her okay. point, you know, we, we kind of talked about that anxiety. And, um, Many people's families, not our family, because that was a good point you said, Dr. Nunnery. A lot of times you feel like it's just you, you know, especially when you have so many people pass away in your family. You just like it's just me. But there's so many families out there that have experienced this and don't even talk about the fear of it. Mm -hmm. Like you don't even want to talk about it. I remember being at a place where I didn't want the phone to ring. I didn't want anybody telling us about anybody passed away. And it was hard to even hear other people talk about someone just, and that's just that anxiety and that fear. But like, as to your point, you know, God didn't give us the spirit of fear and we have to be able to talk to someone. Yes, we're strong. Yes, many of us are saved, have the Holy Spirit, all that great stuff, but we need each other. So we don't have to deal with this alone, reach out to someone 
um, be honest. It doesn't matter if you have a position in a church or you're whatever people's expectations of you are, you're a human being. And if you're afraid, if you don't know what to do, um, you know, if you, you, and you don't even, and, and maybe you feel like you got to be strong because you don't want your kids to be worried about you. My, our daughter came down with COVID after all the other people in our family had it. And I remember, and we couldn't see her. And I remember just being like, God, for real. Now, you know, I'm not even, you know, I didn't, I had such a fear, but I didn't want anybody to know, you know, we try to be strong and we try to save people. We don't want people to know. But don't live in fear. Talk to somebody like Dr. Nanny was saying, if you need to reach out for counseling, your pastor, one of us, call somebody um, and, and get the help that we need. You are not alone. You're not alone. So we'll be praying about that. Does anybody else have any other questions or uh, comments? All right. Well, Again, Dr. Nunnery, thank well, you. Well, Kim? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, this is Aunt Anne from Georgia. Thank you all so much for bringing this segment to us. This has been very educational for me and very, very helpful. Uh, as we all know, we're just experiencing a year later uh, after all of us had been contracted with the virus, but we're still survivors. But I've got a question. I have not had the vaccine because it's so hard to get um, into the um, system here in, in Albany area. So many people, I guess, are trying to get it. But my question is, I understand there, there's like a three week waiting period for the Pfizer after the first vaccine. And then I think uh, 30 days for the uh, Moderna. What happens if by chance we miss the, um, the date, I guess, for the second vaccine? What kind of window still, do we have? You should still be able to get it. Once you pass that minimum time period, you can get that next one as soon as possible. So if okay. it's like Pfizer, but it's more than 21 days, you can still get it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great question. Great question. Okay, anybody else? Bishop Whaley, you good? <laughs> All right, I think Bishop's good. Uh, Ms. Wood. Oh, go ahead, doctor, go ahead. You got something else? Miss Wood. Oh, come on, Miss Miss Wood. Oh, thank you. Um, You're on mute. Oh, you went on mute. Okay. That's All my right. mom. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, mom. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm so proud of my daughter. This is great information. Um, a lot of accurate information. I'm so proud of her. But uh, everything that she said is really, really true. Um, I've had both of the shots. Um, I had the, uh, the Pfizer and didn't have any problems, thank God. But um, at first I was a little hesitant because I work in the health field as well and with patients mm -hmm. as well. So with, uh, with that, um, I was covered uh, actually during the pandemic. We were moved from off taking the uh, floor, seeing the patients and calling them on the phone. But now it's in the process of us going back on the floor. So I did get a little anxiety um, myself. And my uh, youngest daughter's like, Mom, I didn't know you felt that way. But to me, I've had the shot and uh, it's almost two weeks before I'll be fully vaccinated. Um, like, like my daughter said, and a lot of people didn't know that. Um, but with going back on the floor, it's like I'm walking in, I work in the emergency room. So I see the patients um, sometimes before they actually get the results. So I'm like, okay, Lord, now what you gonna do? You know, you still got to cover me, you know? So um, I'm, I'm at that point where I'm not, I'm not scared, but I'm like, you don't know who have it, who don't, you know, and you don't know what stage they're at. So um, just listening to this, I have to really pray and ask the Lord to just, you know, keep my anxiety level low because it could rise with, you know, you, um, you have to check out their files and stuff to see if they've been tested. Um, when was the last time that, um, that they did get tested, if they had the shot already, 
but you just don't know. This is one of those things that's unseen. So you ask the Lord for uh, covering you for danger, seen and unseen. So that's what I am right now, you know, and just listen to everything that, um, that Vicki has said, Dr. Nunnery has said. Um, so with, with that said, with even going to see the, doing, uh, going to see your, um, your doctor for your mammogram, I did put mine off only because uh, at one point they had shut it down. But now that they're opening it back up, you know, I'm ready to go back and, and get it. But I have to wait uh, my four to six weeks to go and, you know, since, uh, because of like they said a lot of those uh, show up in your uh, um, in your body. So with that said, yes, there's so much information that she's covered. And I deal with a lot of pediatric patients. So I'm watching the the uh, side effects that they have, not side effects, but the issues that they have, and they're a little different than the adults. So we have to really watch them as well. Um, a lot of it is um, abdominal pain and um, they're coming in for um, just minor issues and then they get tested and then they have it. And that's so heartbreaking because um, they want the kids to go back to school, but yet it's not safe enough. They haven't, they don't have a shot for them yet. So I understand the parents want to go back to school. Um, the kids want to go back to school, but is it safe enough? That's my issue. Amen. So was, was that a question? Oh, you were just saying that, or did you want your daughter to answer that? Well, that's a kind of statement because she's covered right. everything. <laughs> right, right. She did. And we love her. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you. Wonderful job. She is awesome. Just a great person. I mean, she's got all the credentials, but when I tell you a heart of gold, she's awesome. So I'm sorry I had to put that plug in. <laughs> Thank you so much. Y'all make me tear up when y'all do this. <laughs> and I, sometimes I try not to say anything, but I'd be so proud of her. I just gotta say, that's my baby. <laughs> Man, that's sweet, sweet. All right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All right. So again, Dr. Nunnery, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll continue to cover you in your healing um, from your surgery. You know, if you would have told me that, I would have been like not tapping into you, but that just shows your faithfulness. Uh, we don't take that for granted. Um, you know, I've seen God, you know, just take you through the ranks and I know there's more great things in store, but I just want you to know the pure partners we are grateful on today. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Yes. So we will have her back next quarter. She comes once a quarter in her own way. Um, if you ever have questions for her concerning um, medical, preventive health, whatever questions, if you give those to us ahead of time, we can go in and we can ask her and she'll come with answers or she'll just answer them. Um, just a blessing. Her beautiful baby boy, Caleb, he's so cute. I saw him uh, in the background. He has grown and her husband. Thank you all so much. We really, really appreciate it. Oh, there's Caleb. Okay, he's going to make his, there he goes. Oh my God, he's gorgeous. Look <laughs> at him. <laughs> Thank you. He's a cutie. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you All guys. Right. Have a good night. You too. You too. Thank you. All right. So we're going to get ready for, uh, thank you, Miss Woods. We love you. Come back to see us every Sunday evening. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we're going to go into our announcements. All right. So let's get going here. Let me see. Where is it at? Okay, I'm in the beginning. All right. All right. So next week, we are so blessed to have Bishop Willie Browning. He's going to be with us. He's going to be sharing with us concerning uh, spiritual healing. Awesome man of God, awesome psalmist, just I'm excited. So he's going to be talking about spiritual healing on next week. Let me go back here. All right. Go ahead, baby. All right. Um, I thought she was going to do it, but. Oh, <laughs> you want me to? But uh, we also want to announce, 
the Peer Partner presents the Milton J. Johnson Senior Scholarship. For those that, that don't know, uh, this is my father that passed away, uh, matter of fact, one year ago as of March the 26th yes. from COVID. Uh, we are, Peer Partner is having a scholarship in his name. Mm -hmm. uh, you may donate if you want to. We are taking donation for the scholarship fund. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our first year doing. This is our first year doing it. We plan, and this will be something that we would continue to do throughout the years. Um, and if you would like to donate, you can do cash out, or we will put our cash out uh, information on here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know somebody that would like to apply for the scholarship. Uh, you can go on our Peer Partners Facebook page. The flyer will be posted on our Facebook page along with the qualifications. Mm -hmm. uh, you can. Uh, there is a, There will be a link also attached to the flyer on our Facebook page for the, the applicants to uh, go on there and fill out the application. Also, their essay as well. Uh, so we're, we're so proud to announced this uh this scholarship amen and you see the qualifications here uh for the scholarship you can read through them um our father he he um went between um georgia and detroit those were his uh places that he would go um so you have that these the uh applicants must be residents and it's all on there. You can read through that or have ties to those locations. So we can give you more information. Put your uh, name in the chat box if you're interested, and then I'll reach out to you. But we are just honored to be able to do something in his name. He's been on the Pure Partners before. And as y'all know, one of the things he believed in was children, um, education, uh, training them up for them to be successful. So this is just the honor that we get to do in his name to bless someone else. All right. All right. Coming up tomorrow, we have a special edition of the Pure Partners tomorrow uh, entitled Mind Your Business. We're going to have Bishop Shelton Tolbert back with us Last time when he was on, something happened with the audio and it messed up. So he's coming back on tomorrow. And the great news is he's going to be talking about starting your business. And then Bishop Stephen, let me move this so you all can see better. In just one moment. Okay. Bishop uh, Stephen Thomas is going to be on and he's going to be talking re about rebranding your business. Okay, he is an awesome graphic designer. He has his own business. He's also a pastor as well. Uh, and these two gentlemen are gonna get our businesses in line. So that's tomorrow, 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link is listed below. Uh, if you need more information, please put your name in the chat box and we will make sure to send that out to you. But you don't wanna miss this, it's gonna be awesome. All right, this is going out to all the men. Uh, we have the men check um, virtual end gathering coming up in two weeks. Uh, you don't, the men do not want to miss that. We have three awesome men of God that's going to come on. And we start starting with our very own pastor here in Clarksville, Tennessee, Apostle Harold K. Browning, senior. We're talking about the importance of fatherhood. Uh, whether you're a father or fatherless or you grew up with a father, he will be talking about that. Dr. Will Moreland, we're talking about uh, moving from a poverty mentality to a prosperity mindset. And then we have Bishop uh, Richard Woodson Jr. talking about just do it, mm -hmm. the it, whatever it is, whether it's starting a business or being a better man, a better husband, whether the it is. So you, the men, you do not want to miss miss it. Uh, you can go into Eventbrite uh, to register. There's no fee for this event, mm -hmm. uh, but we ask that you go and register. Uh, ladies, go ahead and, and invite your, encourage your, your husband, your father, your Paul, Paul, your uncle, your son, whoever it is to come on to this event, April the 10th. They, do not, they do don't, don't want to miss this event. All right. So now we're going to call on our administrator, Davida, for the rest of our announcements. 
Hello, hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Um, our next announcement, women, you are not left out. <laughs> the Peer Partners Virtual Ministry presents Wisdom for the Way Women's In Gathering. So women, you are not left out. If you were a part of the virtual conference back in February, then you definitely wanna come back and be a part of this women's end gathering. The theme is anxious for nothing, Philippians 4, six through seven. And that is on Saturday, May the 1st at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have three phenomenal speakers on that day. We will have Pastor Cherry Hill Shepherd. I'm sorry, Pastor Cherry Shepherd Hill and Reverend Linda Wayman Varner and Evangelist Yvette P. Tolbert. So you don't want to miss this, please go to eventbrite.com and register. Again, the day is May the 1st at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this event is free as well. So please go and register. We want you to be a part. Oh, and, okay. oh go ahead. Oh, okay. All right, and this was the other one, Davida. Um, so uh, our very own Bishop Tolbert, the one that's doing the Mind Your Business conference tomorrow, he is also going to be hosting a financial workshop, uh, which is also uh, free of charge, Thursday, April 1st, and also Thursday, April 8th, covering budgeting, investing, insurance, and, um, you know, the theme is beginning with the end in mind. And we know Bishop uh, Tolbert, he's awesome. Um, he's come a number of times here and have shared some valuable information with us. And everything that him and his wife do is in excellence. So he wants to get us back on track post-COVID uh, and get us ready and in line. So those are the dates. We'll be announcing that. Uh, and the link, it says at the bottom, that if you want to uh, register, you can text that number at the bottom for the link, but we'll also get that link and provide it to you as well. All right, thank you, Davida. Mm -hmm. um, that concludes all of the announcements for this week. Um, does anyone have any prayer requests that they would like for us to cover? Um, if you do, you can, um, you can um, take yourself off mute and let us know, or you can put it in the chat if you have a prayer request that you would like for us to cover, because we would like to 